G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday evening here in Australia and the market's down. We've gone under that $2 trillion mark. Just how low can we go is the question, I suppose. Oh, I wasn't even trying to make that rhyme and sound that corny, but that's the way it came across anyway. Good Lord. All right, moving on. So, yeah, we're down 4.4%, under $2 trillion. So, definitely a correction. I mean, things were, you know, somewhat overheated. Uh, and I did say the other day it wouldn't surprise me if we wouldn't come down and retrace a little bit and we'll get to the Bitcoin charts shortly. And it looks like it's gone to at least where I thought I would now, to waiting to see if it'll go low or maybe it's done its thing. Who knows? But all right, Bitcoin dominance, risen a little bit, but look, it is going down uh, under 44% at the moment. Volume up uh, slightly, which is interesting considering the market is down. And gas prices is getting a little bit cheaper, but still about sort of $2. Now that is for just a very basic transaction. You want to do a smart contract transaction, something on Uniswap, going to definitely cost you more than that. All right. Doesn't look pretty, does it? Market's down 4.4%. It was up 5.5% uh, yesterday. So that's what you got to remember. Like, you know, you'll get a... Say you get a 20% uh, rise in something in 24 hours. you most likely, now again, none of this is financial advice, just my personal opinion, but what I've seen is if you go up by you know X percentage, doesn't matter if it's in 24 hours or seven days, you're probably gonna lose about a third of it uh, at some stage in the not too distant future. Now it's a third of what it went up, not a third of the total of the price of it. So again, this went up 5.5% yesterday and now it's down 4.4%. So you know, Roughly, not quite, but there's about a third of that. Uh, pro sorry, two thirds is what I was uh, meant to say. Is you can lose about two thirds of that once you have a good correction, and so you've lost about that. It could absolutely go low. We'll just have to wait and see. But again, not looking good. But were there any big movers in the last 24 hours? Did anything still do well considering the market is down? All right, uh, content value network. So again, these are now coins that are pumping that were down previously. So things will pump for a while and then they're gonna go down and then they're gonna pump and then they're gonna go down and then they're gonna pump and that is the kind of seesawing action that things are doing at the moment because this pumped, oh God, it was about a week or two. Both of these did, Content Value Network and uh, XDC, both were pumping about a week or two ago and then they were just coming down. Again, this as you can see it here where it leveled out for about the last seven days. And same with XDC, it was up and then it come down and then it's starting to pump up a little bit. But generally, the market is down. So again, that's why we don't have too many real movers. Axie Infinity, up about a percent, but again, look, it was up and then it was uh, on its way down. So things are kind of seesawing and chop soaring all over the place at the moment. Look, two kind of what I would consider good gains in 24 hours. That 15% and above, I consider good. 12%, uh, not too bad. And then we just got a couple of single digit movers. And look, most of those are in the low single digits. And then we're basically into our stable coins and things like that. Right, what about losses then? Considering the market's down, what's been hit the hardest? Oof, audio. And again, you knew this was coming, or if you didn't, you should have known it was coming. This was up 100% in seven days. So in the last 24 hours, as we can see there, you've lost about a third and it could lose a little bit more. Now, it's not going to lose, you know, two thirds of its total price. It's going to lose probably anywhere from about a third to two thirds of the gains that it made in the last sort of week or so. Because that's just the way it is. It got overheated. Now, all of a sudden, people are taking some money, uh, particularly those who got in nice and early. So we'll have to wait and see where it goes down to. Uniswap having a pullback. Aave, Theta, KSM and all double digit losses. But yeah, I mean, look, double digit losses and then even high digit losses. But the reason that's happening is because we can get rid of the Bollinger Bands. I was just looking at something before. It's because of this. Boom, big pump. Good correction. Boom, kind of big pump. So we're having a bit of a correction. And I was just saying the other day when Bitcoin was sitting right on this line here that I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't come down and bounce off this and use it as support down near the $4,300 mark. Now we did wick down to not quite $4,300, but we've had a little bit of a bounce back already. But we'll have to wait and see. This could still kind of hold here and then roll over tomorrow and again come down to this $4,300. We might have to come back right down to this $4,200. 
there are people saying that they expect us to come back down to, I think it's around about uh, 30, sorry, 8,000. I think it's somewhere in and around actually sort of here. People saying we might have to come back down to the $38,200 level before we can go back up. You know, I'm not sure. We'll just have to wait and see. But I would uh, sort of expect that it's going to hold this line. That Again, we've tested it. We might have to come back, test it again. And then we might have to come back, test it again at around this 42 ish thousand dollar level at some stage before we may make our way back up or this was what a lot of people have been saying was nothing but a bull trap getting everyone to think oh we're going bullish and then it rolls over and that's definitely possible absolutely possible i'm just not sure we'll have to wait and see my, my personal thoughts are we again probably bounce off here roll over again uh, and maybe bounce again somewhere down around 42,000 that would kind of make sense somewhere back down around about here and again probably around about here so maybe the 25th of August so maybe we're still a week away before I think we may start to finally make our way back up could be completely wrong none of that's financial advice just my personal opinion we could bounce from here and make our next you know move to the upside but again it really is that kind of 52 sort of thousand dollar mark around about sort of here ish down to around about sort of there where we have to break above that before you know we can probably say yeah it's pretty much guaranteed that we are in a bull run because we could come up to that fifty two thousand dollar mark and again roll over and then just go all the way down definitely possible all right, moving on to some uh, stories that I found. All right, Kenyans are being cautioned against investing in BTC company that's promising returns of 400% in six hours. I hope no one who's watching this video would be silly enough to fall that, fall for that. The only way you're going to do that is leverage trading and high risky leverage trading. And I don't do leverage trading. I never have and I'm not sure I ever will. Sometimes I think, oh, I should probably have a, dib a dabble you know, a dabble in it. But, you know, then I hear things like, you know, uh, Alex Saunders, you know, possibly losing a whole lot of his money and other people's money, uh, getting carried away with leverage trading. And then I just think investing so much easier. But this kind of return, I mean, 400%, even in a year, that's probably asking a bit much, depending on, you know, when you're getting in and all the rest of it. You can make 400% in a year. If you're lucky enough to get in right at the kind of bottom of the bear market, make 400% in a year is not sort of unheard of. But, you know, 400% in six hours, total scam. Please beware, don't fall for this kind of stuff. It's just, yeah, it's not realistic and you know definitely not guaranteed you know the higher the percentage return they're offering you the higher the chance that you're going to get wrecked and lose your money that's just the way it goes i don't think anyone who's sort of saying they can give you you know around about a kind of eight to maybe 14 percent return uh not in six hours you know over the year or something like that yep that's fairly doable in cryptocurrencies not so much in a bear market though pretty hard but outside of a bear market yeah, I think 8 to 12% in a year, quite easily. I wouldn't be scared off by anything like that. Again, not financial advice, personal opinion only. And provided it's coming from a company that's got a good team behind it and probably been around for a little while as well. But this kind of stuff is just total scammy. Yeah, buyer beware. I'd stay right away from that stuff. Right, Brazil seems like they're getting right into their crypto at the moment. So the president of Brazil's central bank, he had a meeting with Jeremy Allaire from Circle, excuse me, and Brian Brooks, formerly of Binance uh, and Coinbase, and was the OCC. Excuse me. The president of the Central Bank of Brazil is clearly serious about cryptocurrencies, and it seems that the country is also becoming more and more interested in exploring blockchain solutions to increase the efficiency of its financial system. This is where everybody is going. This is, again just my personal opinion but i think everywhere is going like this all central banks you can see them buying into you know shares of grayscale's bitcoin trust and all sorts of things and opening up uh, exchanges and all the rest of that to uh, offer cryptocurrencies you know at first it's just going to be to their 
higher class, you know, their upper class uh, banking clients. But eventually, once the price gets to a point where they've all got their great positions at the cheapest price they can, then they'll open up to open it up to everybody else. I mean, you know, even PayPal still is only doing it, I think, to its American customers at the moment, getting ready to open to its UK customers before it then goes worldwide. All the big players need to get in and get their positions built before they're going to, yeah, sort of let this... Yeah, market kind of, you know, move to the next level. And I've been saying that for a while. But look, even the central banks, even though it's Brazil's central bank, not one of the biggest ones, still a central bank, they can see the writing on the wall and it will be the little uh, banks that kind of move first. And when they start to do extremely well, the bigger banks will go, all right, we need to get on top of this. And don't get me wrong, the bigger banks are starting to make moves but they're you know, kind of dipping their toes in at first because they're still worried that it could all go to zero and regulation comes in and all the rest of it. And no one wants to be the first. They want to see someone else come in and either get completely burnt and then justify their actions for not getting in and say, I'm glad I didn't go in all in or in at all. But once they start to see one or two people, one or two banks that will be, do really well, watch them all just start to pile in. It'll just, yeah trickle trickle flood that is how it works but very interesting that brazil is getting in there all right dogecoin they had a foundation once upon a time and now their foundation is back so dogecoin has a new foundation behind it and it has vitalik buterin of all people and a representative from elon musk on its board be interesting to see uh what kind of role vitalik is playing and whether this turns out to be true because you know we hear things like this uh, on occasions and then all of a sudden it turns out not to be true i just find it interesting that vitalik buterin would get on the board of dogecoin uh, i mean you know he got a st whole stack of shiba inu and he you know donated it all and things like that so yeah waiting for more on this i'm not sure i'm completely sold on this article yet and whether that's true not saying it's not it'll just be interesting to see where it goes i guess it's, you know then there's going to be a dogecoin uh, bridge across the EVM, you know, to Ethereum. I mean, everything's doing that anyway. But yeah, we'll keep uh, a lookout and see exactly what yeah comes from this. Right, Bitcoin mining revenue is up thirty three, sorry, thirty five million dollars per day since the China crackdown. That kind of tells you where things are. That yes, we're having corrections, and that's what it is—a correction, and it could go even lower. But there's still so much money pouring into this space and all these things happening these kind of things don't happen in a bear market once it starts to go down and really continues to go down you don't hear anything there'll be almost zero news about cryptocurrency in a real bear market it'll just be dead silent the big players won't be piling in and doing all this stuff if they really do think it's going to go lower they're not diving straight in at the moment and they never will kind of dive headfirst in well there will be a few you know uh, Grayscale, you know, and a couple of things like that. Uh, Pantera Capital, they went all in early on. But the really big kind of, you know, hedge funds and that, they're going to build positions, they're going to wait and see. And then when it starts to do well, they'll continue to build their positions. But they all have heard of the four-year cycle and the next bear market. I get the feeling like they're building positions, they're getting ready to take some profits, and then when it, you know, goes down again, they're going to start to buy in on the way down. That's what I see coming. Right, NFTs, the war is on. So Pepe the Frog Creator has $4 million worth of Sad Frogs project removed from OpenSea. So again, OpenSea, the biggest NFT space at the moment, and someone has brought out these Sad Frogs. And Pepe the Frog Creator has come out and said, no, that is a, a, a take from his... So a copyright infringement, that's the word I was looking for, from his Pepe the Frog. So creator of the beloved, sometimes controversial Pepe the Frog meme, Matt Fury requested that a frog-themed NFT project worth $4 million be removed from OpenSea for copyright infringement. So that is, I see a lot of this happening. You know, NFTs are all going to get very, very similar and then, you know, trying to, you know, copyright infringe it and all the rest of it. This will be an interesting time to see how these things kind of hold up because I'm going to say it probably doesn't look exactly like his, but it's similar enough. And look, a ton of NFTs could be like that, particularly uh, things where you go sort of cartoon space and things like that. I think that'll be pretty hard to hold up in court and there could be a battle there. And yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens. 
But this is one of the things that worries me about the NFT space. You know, you get in, you pay however much you did for one of these, and then all of a sudden it gets done for copyright and your you know, NFT is worth nothing. You know, you can't sell it for anything. You know, all good if you didn't buy it for too much and it was just for sentimental value. All good, but if you're ever trying to make a profit from it, then yeah. And there's, I mean, there's massive profits in the NFT space. You know, again, I'm kicking myself that I kind of didn't get in there, buy some and flip some and make some good money. But yeah, you can't do everything. And, you know, NFTs was just something I didn't understand enough about. So it is what it is. All right. Sushi Swap had a massive exploit that luckily a white hat uh, sort of hacker found uh, and let them know about it. So White Hat potentially saved Sushi Swap from 350 million by finding an obvious exploit. And oh, that is a little bit uh, concerning. The security researcher found a flaw in a Dutch auction smart contract that could have resulted in the loss of 109,000 Ethereum, so obviously worth $350 million. So a security researcher from venture capital firm Paradigm, known on Twitter as, oh, I don't even know how to say, say this, Sam Kassam, hopefully I said that right, has managed to save SushiSwap uh, and its uh, MISO platform from potentially losing, again, $350 million worth of ETH. So glad that he found it and it wasn't some other hacker because, you know, we already saw the... Uh, Poly Network one for six hundred eleven thousand uh, for Sushi Swap, one of the bigger players, to then lose three hundred fifty million really would have hurt the space. And this is the problem that we face with DeFi and all these smart contracts at the moment is they are very new. You know, we don't know how robust they are. You know, other than Bitcoin being around for a long time uh, and hasn't had any hacks outside of that. The rest of them, you know, we're still in that kind of testing phase, and you know. Lucky for Sushi Swap, this came uh, when it did, uh, and it was found by the person it was found because someone else, you know, with ulterior motives, could have really hurt that platform and really hurt a lot of people. You know, that three hundred and fifty million dollars uh, that would have been investors' money, people, you know, who'd put their Ethereum and all the rest of it uh, on the platform, and they would have been the ones hurting. I'm not sure Sushi Swap would have, you know, had three hundred and fifty million dollars uh, to fix up that kind of hack. I'm not saying they wouldn't. I'm sure they've probably got a lot of money, but whether they would have been able to without, you know, really disadvantaging themselves or not, yeah, I don't know. Last but not least, again, the scaling, it's all starting to happen. So one inch are getting ready to launch on Optimism. So, you know, there's Arbitrum, Optimism, you know, Polygon uh, Network, you know, lots of things like that. And look, one inch, they're looking to get onto things like Solana, Avalanche, Tron, Near, and also L2 solutions like Arbitrum uh, and Zinc. Uh, and, you know, they're also working with a whole stack of other layer two, so Aave, which is on Polygon, Curve, Sushi Swap, Quick Swap, and Sushi Swap, which again, lucky didn't get completely and utterly wrecked. So again, these things don't happen really in bear markets when everything's starting to go down they're going to hold off on that stuff they all still see the upside everyone's clamming to get onto these l2 things for that next final kind of you know big push to the upside now whether that's coming soon like you know bitboy says he believes it's all going to be done by sort of september october other people are saying no it's the extended cycle and they expect it to push out to march you know my personal opinion is I really don't know. I, I, I have no idea. I get the feeling like they are stretching out and being a little bit longer. That makes a little bit of sense. But also, you know, Bitcoin's got a bit, Bitcoin. Bitboy has a good point that, you know, they've been following a cycle for four years. But you can already see that things have changed. The way the markets are now, the big players are here. They are going to change things. I get the feeling like they're kind of expecting people to try and, you know, sell out at that kind of September mark and they'll probably push it higher if they don't completely and utterly dump the market earlier. I'm not sure they want to do that or that they even could do that, but it is something to keep in mind. Hence why, hence why you know, I say, you know, make sure you take some profits. You've got to have some money sitting on the side uh, for if the market does go down and you haven't just been completely and utterly wrecked. All right, look, that's it for me. I've been working all day. So I am a little bit tired. I didn't have a whole lot of time to put into this video and I'm working over the next few days. But I'll hopefully have a bit of a sleep in tomorrow and be a lot more focused and be a, 
uh, able to spend a little bit more time on my content. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Watch out. We could be facing some more downside before we see some more upside. And I'll see you next time.